Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Estes Angling. You're joining me and my dad for a fishery review today at Beacon View Fisheries. This is a fishery that we used to come and fish often back when I was a kid. The reason being is it had small sturgeon in. I think they had sturgeon in up to about like five, five, five to ten pound. I five think. to ten pound. I believe there was a couple in here around six foot. So they used to have some decent sturgeon in. We used to fish like lunch and meat down the margins for them. And then the environment agency made him take them all out. This place has changed massively since the last time we come but we've just brought our stuff down to the pegs here and uh, we're all geared up to fish the method feeders like we, we normally would and i was actually going to fish bread on the method feeder so me and my dad have both whizzed up some bread ready for a tough session because we know that the fishing here is quite tough but there's plenty of nice carping mixed course fishery and there's loads of bubbling and uh, activity on the lake already so it, it's all good signs but uh should we have, should we have a look at them rules dad but the rules are to be quite honest with you in my opinion a little bit ridiculous they're about as clear as mud to me they don't really make any sense so as i'll show you in a second the rules say that you're allowed a free running feeder which obviously my banjo feeders are but yet you're not allowed to use method feeders now it's whether they mean elasticated i can't i can't quite understand or comprehend why you would be able to use a lead but not a method feeder it's the exact same thing it works in the same way but there you go so extensive rules these are old rules so whether that's changed or whatever i don't know but no meat or cheese no bread no method feeders it says small free running feeder only allowed which makes no sense in general um no floating baits ground bait only small amount of ground bait no nuts or boilers yet you're allowed to use boiler on the hook no pva bags so what i'm thinking is how do you how would you get if you're not allowed to use pva and you're not allowed to use method feeders how do you get your bait out further in the water because the fish here tend to hug the middle line it seems from what people have told me but we're going to give it a go these banjo feeders that we use are small and the free running they're not technically method feeders i think what this means is that you're not allowed to use elasticated feeders what do you think dad do you think that's what they mean yeah so they want it to be free running and they want it to be safe for the fish as you know that's what we want as well we don't want a fish to be towing around a feeder these banjo feeders that we use technically not method feeders the banjo feeders so i think we're complying with the rules there and they're only small aren't they yeah they are. so i think we're safe but that's up to interpretation. I'm sorry guys if you feel like we're not sticking to the rules there, but we did bring bread feed. I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna use pellets and we're gonna use small banjo feeders. And I think we're being fair. There's not many places out there that don't allow method feeders. So we're gonna give it a go, but what a beautiful fishery. They've changed it all. Um, they've closed off this entrance to this uh, house and cabin area where you used to have to walk past that to get to the fishery didn't you yeah you used to walk across the lawn yeah so you used to walk across the fr front lawn i think it's uh, an oldish couple that owns the fishery whether it's changed hands and they don't want people walking across the land anymore that's potentially one of the reasons but it's only just opened there's nobody else fishing right now it's just gone seven o'clock and uh my dad's pretty much already set up so that's the way we're going to do it small banjo feeders and i think we're being fair obviously if we get told not to use them we'll just swap over we'll probably uh, i don't know go to like a, a lead setup do you think dad if we get told yeah we'll, have to. yeah. Yeah, we'll go to a lead setup leads are just as no difference. <laughs> there's no there's no difference between a lead setup and a method feeder if anything the method feeders are safer aren't they i mean for the method feeder it, it's more fixed i think where the banjos we use are the, the, the running no difference yeah. to a running ledger no the, uh, as my dad says there's no difference to a running ledger so there is the amount of banjos you lose <laughs> yeah exactly mine come off all the time uh very very safe <laughs> right so to make it a little bit more interesting i'm going to do a little bit of a bait challenge i'm going to be using pink wafters and i'm going to be using corn 
and I'm going to see which bait does the best. So we're going to have a corn versus wafter challenge. I'm going to mix some pellets up and I'm probably going to put some of that pineapple goo in just to give them a little bit of flavour. I think my dad's only brought bread. Luckily I brought a kilo of uh, two mils. So I'm going to get them mixed up, set them to one side and then we'll get our rods set up. I'm going to be fishing my specimen rods because there are some cracking carp in here. I think they go into well into 20 pounds, but it's not a specimen like this. It's just a normal course fishery. The pegs that we're fishing, I've had a little bit of a tip off from one of my subscribers Ashley so thanks very much for this tip Ashley so across from this peg that my dad's fishing here is actually a sunken island so he's going to have to cast around try and find that but that's where the carp are going to be they're going to be on that ledge I'm in the crap peg as usual <laughs> it's a bit snaggy this swim but I'm going to try I'll try my best with it I'm sure I'll be fine I'll probably end up in that tree at some point today I think we're going to have a good session I've got a feeling. It, it has been cold the last couple of nights, so hasn't it, Dad? I'm making excuses now, just in case we don't catch, but... Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of happy memories here. So, hopefully, we bring those back today and we have a good session. I'm going to be fishing straight out. Probably, I don't know, towards Mid Lake, I think. Right, I'm going to get set up. Okay, so because my dad's pretty much set up, I'm just going to mix some pellets up for us. Get my mixing bucket. Like I said, I, I was geared up to be fishing bread today, but we need to stick to uh, the rules where we can. Don't want to be getting moaned at. And I'm just going to be using this pineapple goo in the pellets. Obviously guys, you know us, we always like to uh, make things safe for the fish. Very, very into the fish cur. I'm going to mix up the full kilogram of pellets. I can always freeze them if we don't use them all. I'll put plenty of that pineapple goo in. Need to use it anyway because I've lost the top for it. So I'm just going to cover the pellets. Make sure that they're all covered in that pineapple goo and they'll absorb all that water. They'll be perfect then. And they'll go a nice yellow colour from that pineapple goo. Try and put it on a flat surface so that they all get covered nicely. I'll just leave that sitting in there, give it a stir every now and again. It's my dad's birthday this week coming, so I've got him <laughs> I've got him a Westies angling hoodie. Now I have got a few of these for sale, so they're orange and black. This one's a large. What do you think, Dad? They're alright them, aren't they? <laughs> Thanks for asking if I needed an extra large. <laughs> yeah, I've got two extra large and one large left. Yeah. So. Large large. <laughs> my flask. Only got my small chair today because I thought I might need to sit under a brolly. And I still might, I think, yet. Yeah, so, if we go with this. Yeah, there's plenty of blowing and activity. Some really nice tension here as well. And uh, I think there's quite a few double figure carp. I don't think they're mega easy to catch. We've never done right well for carp here, have we? Oh, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's jam packed. It, it's a good few years since we've Yeah, it's. How many years do you reckon it's been since we fished it? Like 10. 10 years, so. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's probably a completely different fishery to when we last fished it. I can imagine it being under new ownership as well. Charged my uh, buzzers up last night. I 
and we'll switch them on. I'll be using my swing arm bobbins. Look at these pellets, so they're taking on all that water. They're going to be nice and soft and pineapple-y. <laughs> so I'm just going to flatten them out just so they're all taking on that goo. Got my bigger net today in the hope that I might catch a, a chunk. I'm going to go with my longer landing net handle today because I was struggling a bit on the last session for uh, reaching out. Do you want to check them pellets, Dad, to see if they're getting there? Oh! <laughs> they, they do tail walk a lot here. I remember them doing that. They, um, they jump right out the water. But I've always found that to be a bad sign. I don't know about everybody else. When they're doing that, I don't think they're feeding. I believe that they do that when they're readjusting the swim bladders. Eh? A bit longer. So I'm going to go with an 8mm wafter on one. And then corn on the other. Nice and simple. Bit of a bait challenge. I'm going to fish heavy here. I'm going to go with... Um, a size 10 to nine pound line and i've got 10 pound line on the reels and we've got banjo feeders loaded up you can see how that's free running so it's sticking to the the free running feeder guidelines and it's only small it's a small banjo feeder so i'm not putting loads of bait out I don't think they're so bad these now dad they're a bit soggy but they'll dry out it's because it's quite cold they're not absorbing the water let's go with a nice long piece of corn Quite a tricky cast with the trees behind me. That's about where that fish topped before. Bait runner's nice and tight. So that's that one fishing. Yeah, me and my dad always used to fish on the other side down the bottom. I'm saying probably why we never caught if these are the better pegs up here. <laughs> yes, my dad's in already. Oh, we've, I've not even got set up yet. Want me to bring your other rod in? Yeah, you're Brought his other rod in there. Give him some playing room. Oh. Oh, what a lovely fish. Really nice fish. Looks like a fully scaled mirror, that. Yeah, that. Get my rod out of the way. Oh, that's a nice one. On the pineapple waft, yeah? Yeah. So that's a 12mm pineapple wafter, that. Hold it up, Dad, let's have a look. <laughs> Bonnie carp that, isn't it? Really yeah. nice scale pattern on it. I want to get a fish now and uh, get my rods out. <laughs> awesome. Save the blank already. Oh, yeah, these pellets have got a lot more sticky now, which is good. Yeah, they're perfect. Yeah, the pellets, they should start to flatten, Dad. When they're right. They just haven't taken on enough water. Just need to be careful that I'm not getting in this tree behind me. I 
I'll show you what my dad caught that fish on. Just so you all know. Look at him, look at his little wafter set up down here. <laughs> so that's what he caught that fish on. And a size 10 hook. Uh, yes, I think it is. So, 12 mil wafter, size 10 hook. Yeah, you can only use up to a size 10 here anyway, so bear that in mind. There we go. Pellets. Tidy myself up a little bit. Can't bloody believe it. He's in again. Same rod. Same rod. So he must you must be on that, that right spot, Dad. There's no question about it. Or is it the pineapple wafter? I can always change my rig up to uh, it's only a tiny one, but it shows you again you can catch small fish on big baits. Look at the size of this wafter it's taken. It's come off. Come off in the net. But <laughs> that really shot off, didn't it? Could be a good day today, but we've said this before and then it's gone absolutely dead, hasn't it? So <laughs> you sometimes you can have a mad half an hour and then Look at it, swimming at margin. <laughs> yeah, you can have a mad half an hour and then it goes absolutely dead. Absolutely clear blue skies at the moment. But, like I said, it has give rain. So I brought my brolly in case I need it. Two fish in the first five minutes. I've got some rigs tied with bait screws on them so I can always swap over to this method if that's working for my dad but at the minute I'm, uh, I'm keeping on with the corn versus wafters and I'll keep with an 8 mil for now uh, if I don't get anything on that again like I said I'll just swap over to the 12 mil pineapple no problem it's weird isn't it I mean two bites in two trucks on that pineapple not it yeah. Off, yeah he's not fishing he's not fishing them mega far apart either so if they're all on that sunken island where it's a bit shallower then you know they, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be here i've no doubt that i'll pick up a couple of fish at some point today but i think i think that right hand rod that you've got out is on that island that's uh that's what i'm predicting but like you say we, we could have could have them two fish and then not have anything for the rest of the day <laughs> <laughs> that's just how it works sometimes we obviously always fish early morning but i know that in these kind of places especially for the carp at this time of year afternoons can be a killer so you know we either catch early morning first thing and then it goes it seems to go a bit dead and quiet at around 11 o'clock probably just when that sun's highest in the sky oh is that your right that's your right hand rod again <laughs> just having a recast of my corn rod Lucky I did as well because the bait had come off. Some pellets out there. There you go, his right hand rod's off again. It looks a bit more breamish that. Nothing on? No. <laughs> looks a bit more like a bream bite that to me. I've got my uh, pineapple wafter rig ready to go. I think I'm going to uh, give it another five minutes and then I'll recast back out. With my dad having so many runs on this pineapple, I think I'd be daft not to uh, reel this one in and put a pineapple out. There we go, ready to go. Self-tied. These pellets are perfect now. Moulding nicely around these banjos.
they're obviously on the feed so I'm not scared of putting quite a few pellets out obviously I'm not going to bury such a, a big bait in the pellets my dad's just tying up another bigger wafter rig and he's going to put both out on the pineapple He's, he's not going to leave the other one out, he's just going to put the pineapple back on. Um, I just switched the camera off then as it shot off, but it was it was definitely running. It's alright, you're not going to go under it. Just let it run. I think this is a decent fish with the way it was uh, pulling line. What a blinding day my dad's having, he must be, he must be in the right spot. Take your time with it, no rush is there. Meanwhile, my bite alarms are broken, I think. Are you sure you them up? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. You see, if I was taking a piss like this and he weren't catching, I'd be going mental. Oh, it's running that. That'll be a decent fish, I think. Either that or he's got his drag set mega low when he's playing it to crowd. Yeah. That first one now. On the pineapple and MBO trick. Sticky wafters there. Eh? What chances are of it going off just as they were pulling that that rod? Yeah, I think it confused you a bit, didn't it? Yeah, I thought that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good fish. I have seen the swirl, it's um very, very big swirl. Hard to tell though, innit? It's, uh, it's not that big. Very dark carp, this one, though. The looks of it. Nice fish, that. Common this time. Oh, yeah, no, no. It's, uh, it's not bad, that. It's long. I bet uh, that ain't far off. Eight to nine pound, that, I don't think. No, maybe not. Maybe not quite. Maybe eight. Nails are perfect every time, aren't it? Yeah. Seen that. Right on corner. Nice well, coming now. Let's have a look at it. Lift it up. Pristine fish, aren't they? These. Yeah. They are. Nice yeah. common that. Yeah. Right, get it back out, let's get another. Well, I'll let you get another. Looks like uh, I'm not catching out today. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a good eight pound that, at least. Yeah, definitely if you that first one. Yeah it was, yeah. It's got it had a bit more of a belly on it that one. Look at this, eh? It's cleaning up. It's about time, isn't it, Dad? You've not had much luck this last few sessions, have you? No, this year, to be honest. Fishing like a wally. Look at it. But he takes some advice from me. Look at him. Fishing with these bigger wafters. <laughs> and he starts catching. <laughs> Meanwhile. No, I, I honestly think it's, um, it's the position in here. He must be right on that sunken island. Tell you what, folks, at this rate, if I've not had anything in the next half an hour, they're both going out on the big wafters. And I'm sodding the challenge off. So I want to catch some fish. Just checking. Just checking that they work. <laughs> Just had one bleep. Be a little bit of a liner. I think I'm going to put them both on bigger wafters. Oh. Is there a fish on? Must have been another liner. We think that they come round for the money here at Beacon View. £6 for one rod and another £2 for an extra rod. 
Eight quid, yeah. Well, I'll uh, I'll give you a price update when they come around for the money. It used to be that you paid in like an honesty box, but uh, that building's no longer there, so they must come around for the money. So bright today. It's very long. It's a long lake, isn't it? So yeah. goes right back over there. Decent sized fishery. Yeah, I think I'm gonna swap both of them. I'm gonna sack this challenge off and I'll probably put a 10 mil pink wafter on one side and then uh, stick with one of these pineapple wafters on the other. Yeah, it is a, it's a nice fishery, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right in the countryside. The area is, is it Appley Bridge? Um, yes. So it's an Appley Bridge. In Wigan. Three minutes from junction at M6. Yeah, it's not not far from the M6 at all. Just down a country lane, and then it's a, it's a left turn. Like I said, it only opens from seven. The gates are locked before then. Uh, but you were here a bit before seven this morning, weren't yeah, you? It weren't locked. Gates were shut. Gates were shut, but it weren't but locked. The sign said open. Oh, well, right. right so. Open the gate. And... I think this is a bream. <laughs> Big bream if it is. Oh, it comes, it comes straight down here. <laughs> Can't believe it. Waiting all that time for that. <laughs> I think it's an F1. That's it. Yeah, it's buried that in that bottom blip. It's proper buried. Banjo feeder, free run in there. But that's on the pineapple, so that's what they want today, isn't it, it seems. Yeah. Only a small one, but at least it saves the blank. So all the fish today have been on the pineapple. So, what do you think? Should I swap the other one over to the pineapple? Point still sharp. Just had an absolutely savage liner on this right hand rod. I think a fish was swimming that way and it's just caught in the line. So I might try a bit closer in. What do we think? I think it's fairly deep in the margins here. Let's have a go. Does the sort of bleep on one of his buzzers. Oh yeah, it's very deep there. Might have a go just under armed out. Let's have a go there, a bit closer in. I'll tell you a little story. I fished here, I think I'd probably just started high school or something like that. I was only young. Anyway, we were fishing float on this opposite bank here. And I'd obviously got all snagged up with the uh, <laughs> with the float around a tree or whatever. So my dad was over sorting my line out and whatnot. Next thing, turn around and his, <laughs> his rod's sailing across the lake. <laughs> Weren't it? Yeah, he'd been told a lot middle. Anyway, just about managed to get my uh, rod and line untangled. Anyway, he just he casts out with a float, and you managed you managed to hook first your chuck. cork. First, first chuck. chuck managed to hook his cork handle, and um, reeled it in. <laughs> and the fish was still on, weren't it? 
It were, but we had And then he lost it. it. And then he lost it, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so at least we got out Robin and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was halfway across the lake. I think you spent more time under, undoing my tangles than you did fishing, didn't you then? I think I did it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, that's a proper run. Well, I think it's only a small one, but it shot off that, didn't it? There's some bubbles coming up. What is it? These F1s, that's at the margin, that. Oh, that's under that tree. Yeah, just under it, under, underneath that overhanging tree, that. I want a bigger one, though. So, I'm just loading the method feeder up fairly tight, and then one load over the top that's loosely on. Yeah, so that one was literally the... Thought it was a good fish that way the way it shot off. Oh well. Again, same thing. Someone heavy, and then someone light over the top. Because they'll break off on the cast. And if the, the fish are feeding in the upper layers, I feel like sometimes it draws draws them down. Probably a bit far out that, but be right, I'll leave it. What's this? Bream? I'm a 10 mil wafter. It's a tiny thing. Oh dear me. Come on, something bigger please. But if the fish are feeding down there, then it's only a matter of time until we maybe get something a little bit better. So let's keep on down that margin. That's a drop back in it. Feels slightly better, maybe an F1. Oh, sorry. Well, the bailiff's just been round and she didn't say anything about the method feeders, so we must be all right. A little common, that. Tiny little common. <laughs> On that big wafter. Right, let's get the rods back out. Looks like there's quite a few more people turning up. Maybe four anglers. Another bream, maybe. <laughs> oh dear. Can't keep catching these little skimmers. Might have to put a bigger wafter on, Dad. I can't believe they're taking this 10 mil. Yeah, tiny little skimmer. Dear me. The only thing that I've really got to stop these little skimmers is I'm going to put a slightly bigger hook on. So that's a feeder hook. I think it's a big size 10. And then I've just got a bait band there for the wafter. And I'm just going to use one of these pink DNA baits half tones, 10 by 15 mil. That'll work fine, that. And I'll put that down the margin. But yeah, sick of catching these little tiny skimmers. So I think that's my only option. Come for the carp today. So my prediction is that it's potentially going to go quiet now. There's quite a few people turned up, there's going to be quite a lot of angling pressure. So there's three people on the opposite bank, each fishing two rods. That's six rods out, all cast into a similar sort of spot, uh, which is the middle. <laughs> so I think our best chance now, I think our, my best chance is probably going to be my margin rod. I'm going to bring my left hand rod probably about a quarter of the way out. But I think all this angling pressure now potentially kill it off a little bit we'll see my dad just educated me that it's still the second week of half term so that's probably why it's busier than it normally is on a weekday we only really come fishing during the week we don't fish weekends but can't be a bream surely not on this big wafter 
Sabrine. Oh my God. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm not netting it. Look at this, for God's sake. <laughs> Can't write it, can you? Oh my God, it's hooked itself right in the back. Like, on that. <laughs> can you believe how small that bream was? I've still managed to hook it. Oh my God. Right, let's try again. Folk are strange, aren't they? This fella across from my dad's uh, lobbing out big PVA bags right into the middle where he's fishing. <laughs> oh dear. Just one of them things. So I think we're going to just move our rods a little bit closer to ourselves. Another drop back. There's a touch bigger, maybe an F1. Definitely not a bream. Oh, a little tench. Again, not hooked in the mouth, annoyingly. Must be full of fish down there under that tree. Look at the size of this. I'm trying to avoid them. <laughs> Probably only about five inch long, that tench. Put up a scrap though for the size of it. Yeah, he's literally fishing past midway now. Bit of a joke really, but it is what it is. Bet you could have a good day on pole down here, under this margin. Oh no, I'm in tree. There we go. My dad's not had anything since then, first few fish. Which I thought might be the case, to be honest with you. I don't know. I just think, with it being a bright day, I think it can sometimes really put the carp off. What's your experiences on that, guys? Do you think if it's really bright out that it just it just puts off the fishing? I think they move potentially into the upper layers of the water. I might be talking utter rubbish, but that's my opinion. So because of all the angling pressure that's come on this side of the lake, me and my dad are potentially thinking of making a move down to the bottom corner. So we're just going to flip for it. As it so, so what, Ed, do we move? Yeah, we move. All right, well, there you go, fate's chosen. We're going to move down to that bottom end near the reeds and see if we manage to pick anything up down there. And it'll give you a good idea of which side of the lake is the best to fish. So, but I, I honestly don't think we're going to pick up anything else now here in this peg. We might get a couple of extra fish down that bottom end. So I'm get all my stuff packed up and we'll move down the bottom side for you. Yeah, so we've just made the move. One, I think it's gonna be a little bit shallower here and the wind's pushing into this far margin. So we're gonna have a, a cast across, maybe have one rod to the aerator and then one rod maybe to the far bank with the reeds. And the second reason we've moved is them lads across from us were casting into my dad's swim um, right on the same line as he was fishing, so. Obviously, with having a fishing channel and stuff like that, there's no point in getting into any kind of confrontation with people. Um, it's just easier to move. And you know what? We might pick up another couple of fish down the shallower end. So, where, where are you going to cast yours, Dad? Are you going to go uh, one to the aerator yeah. and one to the far reeds? Yeah, probably one to the aerator and one to the aerator. So, a bit of a gamble moving, but at least it gives you an idea of this side of the lake as well. So I'm going to get my rods back out, see if we manage anything. Look at this folks, look at all these carp just off the side of this reeds here. Oh my god there's loads of them. Look at them all. There's probably 15 carp in that area. Can you see them all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two ghosties and then a load of carp just at the left there. So they've all pushed back out of the way, too much angling pressure down that side. What did I tell you about the move? Sometimes it can be a payoff. I'm going to cast down here with all these carp in. I can't believe it. He's straight in. <laughs> Good call from me, that. <laughs> Good carp as well, that's running. Look at them all down here. 
I don't, I just want to wonder how I'm in. But there's some big carp down there. I don't know if they're feeding. Might just be cruising, but let's see, I've cast one. There we go. That's that. Narrator. We'll have to get straight on that if we get a bite. Oh, it's a lovely fish, that. Huh? Let's have a look at it. Really nice colours on it. Hold it up. There you go. Look at that. Bonny fish. Look at the colours on it. Worth the move? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm confident that we wouldn't have got anything for the rest of the day. There's too many rods casting into that same spot. That right Not on, really. Right over, so. Yeah? Where the wind's blowing into. Yeah. So, he was into far bank over there. But all the carp are holding around these margin areas. Yeah, it probably hadn't even been in a minute that, had it? Not even got your other rod out. <laughs> Crazy, but all the carp congregating around here. Now, whether they're feeding carp or not, that's another story. But they're all pushed back over there. So, fingers crossed, I managed to get one of them. I'm into one of them. Oh my god. They moved into the shallows. Probably to avoid the angling pressure and sit in the sun. But it warms up quick here. It's quite a steep bank here, it'll be a struggle to net it, but <laughs> hopefully it's one of them ghosties. I'd like it to be one of them ghosties. Bit of west is angling moving. And we're straight in. Let's get this. Let's get this landed. That was on a white DNA baits bug. Obviously gone straight down for that. It's a nice one. Not coming in uh, quick. Don't want to lose it. I've got it. Guess it. Left it. Nice coming that. It's obviously gone straight down for that. <laughs> Epic idea to move. You've just sat out here, haven't you? Out the way in yeah. the sun. Nice common that. Let's get it back. Oh. Going it right way around. Here we go. Yes. Not even got my other rod back in. This is a good fish, Dad. Can't move it. Heavy in the water. I think this is a good carp. Similar sort of size to the other, I think. These commons are fighting hard. Was, was that not a fish on that one? That was to the air to that, Dad. It's coming. Come on. Hey. Awesome. It's a bit better condition than that last one. That one's on the... Let's get that out of the net. Yeah. Look at that. Cracker, lovely colour. It's all in good condition, eh? Just got to watch out because there's quite a lot of snags down here. Right, let's get these rods back out. That was on a white bug, that left one. Can you believe it? Well worth the move. Hopefully get one of them ghosties. Well, he's in again. <laughs> to this left hand side. Feels a decent fish. Not where it is though. Old in bottom. Oh, it's here, I can see it. Well, I can see where it, But every fish, old in bottom. Can't move it at all. 
yeah well if it does I'm not gonna be able to do that I don't think because it's a uh, it's a solid fish oh yeah it's a nice fish that what do you think that biggest that there that Don't want it under them uh, reeds. Nice mirror that. They're all in pristine condition. No, it's not ready yet, it's uh, powering around. On the white DNA baits bug, I'm having good success on them, you know. I think they're just very visible. Come on, dad, bad netting that. What are you doing? <laughs> Why is it <laughs> I couldn't move it. Oh, look at that. That's a crack at that. Might have some pictures with that, Dad. That's a double, I think. If I've left someone. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Easy. Cool. Lovely fish. That's one of the nicest looking fish I've ever caught. Look at how orange it is. It's hard to get a thing for it on the GoPro. The oranges in that fish. Stunning colours. <laughs> Cut that. Cracker, eh? Bobby fish that. Bobby. Oh, you've got a bad. He just shot the camera and gone. Bit of a liner. Look at the oranges and colours on that. What do you think that is, Dad? Wait. It's about, it's about double. It's about Might be heavier, you know. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go. I'm probably gonna go 11 pound-ish on that one. Oh. Right, let's get one of these ghosties. I want to get one of these ghosties. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm catching them on. But I think it, a lot of it is the, the placement. I think they're down there in the shallows. But DNA baits, half tones. Yeah, the waft is, yeah. Right, let's get that back out. Four fish in as many minutes. I'm just chucking out off that shit, them shallows over there. Well, this day is turning into an epic one. <laughs> Beacon view, it's getting a thumbs up. Like I said, we're not fishing in a long, long time. Oh. That's the DNA bug on the left. Come on, one of them ghosties. There was definitely ghosties among that pack. I don't know whether you could see it on the GoPro or not. We just sat there for the rest of the day and not caught. I think so. They're in the shell, oh, the carp are up here, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it's dead shallow down here, especially in the margins. It's a really warm day, so rain's coming in about one, two o'clock. Another theory, Dad, is the owners probably sit there feeding. Pe that got shot off, didn't it? Nearly ripped it off my rest, didn't it? Yeah, because it's pulling to its side, isn't it? You jump for them snaggers. Is it feeling ugly? It's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> Net an assistant on the job. Oh my god, it's, it's giving it some this, even though it's a small fish. Oh. We'll switch it back on when we've got it. In. It's long enough. <laughs> it's bigger than it 
they like them, don't they? Yeah, that bottom corner, perfect, isn't it? Every time. Yes, yeah, a nice thick fish, that. Oh. <laughs> Epic. Five, down there, innit? We'll have to go to an action replay and count them, but... Come on, ghosty. Pray for a ghosty for me, guys. There's definitely some down there. Yeah, I was saying before, that's probably a very good peg because the owners might feed. It's going again. They're feeding on that feeder already. The owners probably feed the carp there, sat on that bench. Let's get it down that other end. Oh, it's going some, this one. Cheers, Dad. Yeah, just put it down. I might just fish with one rod to this thing. <laughs> I might just pack up and just sit here and net your fish. Look at it go, this one. Got that drag fairly tight. Hmm? Look at it go, this one. I've got that drag fairly tight. He might just pack up and net me fish. <laughs> Like a jelly. Can't, can't believe it. Red letter day. Don't get de they're all nice stamp as well, aren't they? Yeah. Certainly don't get days like this often. Add it off the rest again, pretty much. This is uh, definitely fighting the hardest. No, they, well, it's the small ones that fight, isn't it? Mm. Big ones just lumber in. More of a dead weight, aren't they? Yeah. Oh god, it's got it. It's going this one. Trying to keep an eye on your rods and all. Nah, it's going look. Oh yeah. That's a nice fish that one again. Bigger than you think that. Yeah it is, yeah actually. <laughs> Still got some power in it, this one. <laughs> got one spot, one scale spot. <laughs> I'm gonna get it back. Let's get another one. <laughs> Let's keep it going. You don't get days like this often, do you? How's your day, Dad? <laughs> I'm gonna be running out of these wafters, I think. What a cracking day. Right, I'm gonna get that loaded up with pellets and get it back out. Well, it's literally just come up with file corrupted on my uh, other SD card, so I'm hoping it's uh, got all this footage, but. Oh, oh come on. Let me dad play this one because I've caught up I think. I think this is in a snag. No, honestly, I think it's in a snag. Got a 
there, so. Okay. Get this back. Fat off one. All them guys are coming up here now. We've moved to move away from them. Now we're having a result. They're moving down here. Crazy. But uh, I just want one of these ghosties that I saw down here. I'm asking too much. Yeah. <laughs> Better. No, oh, it's only small, that, isn't it? What is it? No, I don't. I think it's a goldfish. Yeah, it's a fancy goldfish. That's a bonny fish. <laughs> the fins on it. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the fins. Oh yeah, proper fancy goldfish. <laughs> awesome. snag about midway out, I don't know what it is, but it's in there. Dad, it's in there. Yeah, I was trying to get it up and out. I think I've got it out. There's a snag, the fish know where it is as well, there's a snag somewhere, just just out there. I don't know what it is, but I keep getting caught up in it. A second fish, that. It's gone quiet, that left-hand rod, now. Yeah. Maybe the fish have uh, got a bit wary and pushed away from it. Uh, I seem to be getting a couple towards the far bank, but they keep coming straight up here. And they're getting me in this bloody snag down here, and I don't know what it is. That's two. It's as if they know exactly where to go to get into that snag. I don't know whether it's like a boulder or, I don't know, maybe like thick lily pads or tree root system, but they know to go there. Well, folks, we're probably going to give it another half an hour to an hour and then we'll get packed up. So I just wanted to give you my opinions on this fishery. Like I said, really nostalgic about this fishery. It brings back so many memories of fishing with my dad when I was younger. Um, we've had an absolutely brilliant day. Now, those guys casting into our swim before, it's probably done us a favour. <laughs> because we've moved down here. I saw all those carp cruising and just cast them. And I've obviously caught eight of the ones that were cruising. I think I counted about 14. So they've obviously got a little bit worried and they've gone off the feed now. I've just thought that they might have pushed a bit further out towards that opposite bank. But I might just have to wait a little bit longer for a bite. But my opinion on Beacon View, I think it's a cracking fishery. It's definitely under new ownership. It was an old couple that used to own it. I think the rules could do with clarifying a little bit, but um, I think as long as you're fishing a free running feeder, that's all they're bothered about. They're bothered about the fish health at the end of the day and fish safety. If you know what you're doing, that's paramount. So like any of the rules, just use a little bit of common sense, like I'm sure that you all do and you'll be fine. So I hope you've enjoyed this session. Thanks for watching Westy's Angling. If you have any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. I always try and get back to as many people as I can in the comments. When my dad gets back, we'll just get his opinion quick on what he thinks of Beacon View, but uh, I can imagine that he's gonna rate it. Like I said, it can be a tough fishery. You've gotta be on the carp. It's mostly a carp fishery, but I think there are some decent specimens in. I think there's some nice tench. And uh, I can imagine that there being quite a few nice bream as well. Uh, we're catching quite a few small skimmers out of that other swim down the bottom. But we've made a change. It's worked for us. 
So happy days. Go on then, Dad. What's your view on Beacon View? Well, lovely fishery. Nice and clean, nice pegs. Plenty big enough. So and we've had some nice fish out. Yeah, we have. We've not been in a long time though, have we? So it's it's changed a lot, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, it has. I think for the better as well. I yeah. It's a bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, we tied it before, but. Yeah, it's a really tidy fishery. Nice tidy fishery. Toilets are okay. On site, there's a burger van there. I think, but it's not it's not open today. I know whether that's only open at weekends. I'm not sure. Yeah, it might uh, it might be open during when it's busier, stuff like that. So nice toilet facilities. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a walk from the car park, isn't it? Yeah, it's it. It's not really disabled access. Well, well, it it, it is, but it's hundred yards. It's easy yeah. walking. Yeah. It's about 100 yards from cars. Yeah, so yeah. it's a bit of a walk up from the car park. So if, if you struggle and stuff like that, it might not be the place for you, but um, plenty of parking, isn't there? Oh yeah, loads. Um, I can imagine that it does get busy in summer. Yeah, I think we've just been lucky with the move today. I think this shallow side, this shallow bay on the left-hand side of the lake in summer will be an absolute killer. If you've enjoyed the video and it's been helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you uh, subscribe to the channel and drop a like down below as well. So once again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next West is Angling.